Hello everyone, my name is Triton Perrin and I'm here today bringing you another book review. In this case, the Workshop Lectures series by Yilin Yang. Now there are six books in this series and they're just titled Volume 1 through 6, but they cover quite a large variety of topics, usually involving the opening and the middle game, uh, such as how to play complicated joseki, when to tanuki in the opening, how to handle unusual moves in the opening, playing a territorial game versus a moyo game versus a fighting game, and uh, like the direction you're supposed to attack in, attacking groups severely, and how to handle forcing moves, and like what, what exactly are the forcing moves, I guess. And it just, just has quite a bit of information that... Uh, it's been very useful for me, actually, because I am really bad at the middle game. And that is something that I was slightly disappointed in in uh, Yulin Yang's previous book, The Fundamental Principles of Go, which I have also reviewed. And while I really, really enjoyed that book, it was mostly just about how to play a solid opening. And while that information was extremely useful, I mean, it's, it's hard to choose moves in the opening sometimes and, and the fundamental principles of go gives you a, a basic step-by-step -step guide of um, how to find the correct move it doesn't necessarily tell you the exact move to play but just just how to find them which is usually the most important aspect but i think that sort of information would have also been very useful if it was covered if it also covered more of the middle game and it only sort of covered the transition to the middle game whereas the workshop lectures here cover a lot of topics when it comes to attacking. So the book series definitely complements uh, his previous book. All right, so while there were uh, some very interesting sections in these books, I want to cover the two sections that I thought were very useful for me and that I, I feel sort of highlight what this book series is about. And the first thing I want to talk about is the... Uh, playing a territorial game or playing a moyo game or playing a fighting game and what is sort of the difference between those now i'm not going to focus on the territorial game right now i'm just going to focus on the moyo game versus the fighting game so i have this set up here so if we see that uh, black play two four four points and white play has one three four and one four four now according to the fundamental principles of go um, the only thing that you really need to know about this position is that you have to approach the top left corner because a 3-4 point can make territory with a single move, whereas a 4-4 point needs at least two moves before it can make solid territory. But there are lots of different moves that you can play in this position. You can play some others, I guess, like some attachments and whatnot, but we're going to go with just the four basic moves you can play. And they all sort of have different reasons for being played. As long as you just follow the, follow the idea of, of just approaching the top left, you're sort of good in, uh, in the eyes of the fundamental principles. Now, what makes the workshop lectures very interesting is that there's a very clear distinction here of, of why you'd want to play some of these moves and what type of game you'd be playing depending on the move you chose. Now, for example, the Moyo game. If you want to play a Moyo game on this board, you're very likely to approach here at A, a very common Joseki would be this attach and extend here. And as you can see, the left side uh, black stones are giving off influence that is going to be useful for the four force point stones that black has before. So it's a, it's a consistent strategy. And that's the idea behind these sections uh, is that if you're going to play a Moyo game, you have to play a Moyo game. You have to be consistent and always be moving towards your goal. That doesn't mean you can't be flexible and change your strategy, but consistency is one of the most important things. So this is how Black could play if he wanted to approach this position from deciding to play a Moyo uh, variation. Now, what what makes this position interesting is that you can also play in a way uh, you could you could potentially call it territorial, but you, but this is uh, something that was discussed in the fighting section is that if you play B here instead then you're actually able to, to play a more of a fighting opening. Because when you approach low like this, you're opening up the corner more. So it's harder for white to make a base in the corner. This doesn't mean you're going to be able to attack this uh, stone right away. But it does mean that 
in the future you have more possibilities of attacking. And white is likely to pincer or just play a solid move here. So if white just plays something solid here, and let's say you just go back and white enclosed for some reason. In the future, if you get this move, these two stones are actually starting to get a little bit weak. So if white doesn't do something about it, let's say white plays another big move, and this isn't necessarily the best way to play, then black will be able to attack these two stones because the corner was open. And so that's why you want to play low. This is sort of a long-term idea. So if we go back to this original position, you play low to have potential for fighting in the future, but then you also play high if you're wanting to try to do more of a Moyo game. So it's a very simple example, but I hope what I said makes a little bit of sense. And of course, there's more information being discussed in these sections. So the next section I want to cover is the uh, section on how to attack severely. And this is definitely something that, uh, that I really have to work on because uh, I'm just not good at attacking in general. But I thought it was a, a very interesting section and sort of highlights the ideas that are discussed in this book because it's not just about attacking severely. It's about how to recognize when an attack is severe. And there is a very important distinction there. You could think you're attacking severely, but not actually be attacking severely. So here's the first example uh, that they present in that section. And the idea is how does black attack that top white group uh, in the most severe way? This was asked of his workshop. This is, this is the workshop lectures. And people gave uh, quite a few answers, like trying to play from above here, just squeezing with this move, playing close here. Uh, maybe attaching on the inside or just playing some sort of inside move. And he actually goes through and discusses all of them and why they're not severe or they're severe if you already have this in place or something. But I'm just going to sort of cover two different variations. So one of the first variations that, that a lot of people suggested was just this uh, squeeze here. Because it does feel like you'll be able to do a very severe attack now that you have this stone. Because you can play on the inside and you have an easier escape route. But it's entirely possible that white could just tanuki at this point. And now, yes, you can play a move on the inside. But if white can tanuki like this, then that means that your first move wasn't really severe enough. And what if white just responds directly? Like white just turns here and just makes the group strong. Yes, you did profit um, by getting this stone in but you're not going to really be able to attack this group more in the future. So this is not a very severe attack, you could say. So now that we know that this is not really severe, what could be the severe attack? Like what, what, what makes an attack severe? And that's sort of what's discussed in this section. And I'm probably not gonna be able to uh, tell you what actually makes an attack severe, but in this case, the move that Yulin Yang suggested was this attachment on the top. When looking for a severe move, you're looking for a move where you're asking for just a little bit more, which is why I chose to compare it to this move. This move is trying to get like just a couple more points on the top and to try to unsettle white. This move is also trying to do that, just in a more direct or severe way. For example, if white tries to fight back against this move by trying to swallow up the stone, black can counter Hane and cut the groups in two. The more one of them struggles, the easier it'll be to kill the other one. And so this would not be a very good variation for white because it's gonna be a very hard game from now on. So if white can't really honey on top like this well, and, and capture the stone, then what can white do? Well, this probably means that white has to back off. And if white has to back off and just play like this sort of solid connection, this doesn't really feel good for white. I mean, let me see if I can find the other variation here. If we compare it to this move, this is definitely a better situation. Because white still doesn't have two eyes. White can probably make two eyes, but there is potential for an attack in the future if black gets strong in the center. So in this case, this is just a much more severe attack because you leave possibilities open for you to attack in the future and you got just a little bit extra on when it, when it comes to points on the top. Of course, there's more that was discussed in the book, but 
I don't want to just discuss all of it right now. So when it comes to these books, I would say that you first want to read The Fundamental Principles of Go uh, because it is referenced quite a bit in this series and it's sort of the outline that will help you in deciding a lot of your moves and uh, all that outline is expanded upon in the workshop lectures. I feel like anyone can sort of get this book, so it's not really uh, restricted to any sort of rank. And I sort of wish that when I first started playing the game that I had the Fundamental Principles of Go and the and all six workshop lecture books, as well as um, the Essential Life and Death series, which I may cover, which I may do a review of in the future, because it, it would have been a fantastic starting point for any Go player um, after you've played your uh, was it lo- after you've lost, I guess, your first hundred games or whatever the the proverb is supposed to be. Anyway, I hope you liked this book review. I will definitely be reviewing some more books in the future as I finish them. So let me know if there's any book you specifically are looking forward to seeing me review. And I'll see if I can get my hands on it. Anyway, thank you for checking out this video, and I will see you guys next time.